One of the options that we have for sending home is our warmy disc. This goes in the microwave for four minutes. If you do it for much longer than that, it does have a risk of actually melting and becoming too hot for your kitten. So be careful about the amount of time that you have it in the microwave. When it is done in the microwave, you pull it out and you would put it under a layer or two of your fluffy blanket that is going to go into the cage with the kitten. And you would just simply snug it in underneath slide it back into the cage and your kitten would go right on top to snuggle. Another heating option that we have is an actual heating blanket or heating pad. Uh, these have their pros and cons of course, like everything. Uh, what's nice about these is that you get a very steady heat and that you don't need to be reheating it constantly. Uh, the problem is that if it gets unplugged from the wall, then your kitten has no heat anymore. You always want to have this wrapped in a blanket or some sort of fuzzy covering because to have the kitten directly on it, it's going to overheat and you always keep this on a low setting. You never want to put it any higher. A third option that we have for heating the kittens is actually these fluid bags. Uh, when they expire, if they haven't been opened, we like to write warmy on them, and we actually can use these as a heat source for the kittens. A warmy bag like this, two minutes in the microwave, tends to be sufficient. You'll end up kind of playing hot potato with it, but that's actually good. What you do is you would take it then, once it's out of the microwave, and you would stick it under a layer of the blanket, tucking the sides in, so that the kitten can't actually get into the blanket and next to the heat source. But this, the kitten seem to actually really like it because it's kind of gushy. And so it feels a little bit like mom. And so I have found that they tend to actually prefer these over the other methods, but all of these work well. The downside to this is that you do have to reheat it every four hours at minimum. I like to do it every time I feed them. So when they're little tiny babies, these get reheated every two hours and usually one minute is good enough for reheating because you don't want them to pop in the microwave. Something else we might send you home with are these rice bags. These can also go in the microwave for a couple minutes. They'll stay warm for about an hour. Uh, so if you tuck them under the blankets, they'll hold their heat a little bit better. What's nice about these, especially if you're using something like the heat pad or the warmy disc, is this can be uh, the soft thing that the kittens can snuggle up against. They really like having something raised that they can lean up on. So this is a, usually something that we'll send home, especially if we're doing the other two heat sources aside from the warmy bag. So the reason why I have this listed as primary importance on, uh, for taking care of a kitten is because if they're not warm enough, they're not going to eat. They're not going to be able to digest their food and kittens cannot control their own body temperature. So if you don't keep them warm enough, they will die. And that's point blank why I consider this the most important aspect of caring for a kitten is making sure they're warm enough because the rest of it doesn't matter if they're cold. When you come to pick up your kitten, you will be given a bag of supplies. This will include a container of formula, a bottle, and these are what you, of course, use to feed your kitten. Okay. The bottle may or may not be cut uh, when you come to pick up, so I'm going to teach you how to properly cut the nipple so that your kitten will be able to eat easily but it won't have such a high flow rate that aspiration becomes a risk. Okay. So the bottle, of course, comes in two parts. You've got your nipple with the screw-on cap and the bottle itself. For cutting the nipple, what you want to do is take a pair of scissors, and you'll notice that there is a little ridge right around the edge of the nipple there. And so what I do is I take my scissors, and I get it right onto the tip of that ridge and I cut through once and then I turn it so that I'm making an X and I cut again. Now this on its own is not sufficient because when the kitten nurses on it, it can just collapse it and it's not going to be able to get any milk out. So what I then do is I find the smallest of my corners 
and I peel it back and I actually cut most of that off. So what I end up with is a tiny hole leading into the main hollow of the nipple. And sometimes it can be a little fussy. Ideally, it'll look kind of like this, where you can see a little opening. This will let a little bit of milk flow through to encourage the eating, but not so much that it's just gonna pour down your kitten and run the risk of them inhaling it. Another supply that you may want to get to, just to make your life easier is actually a bottle for a sports drink. What's nice about these is that they have a wide opening at the top that lets you get the formula in there really easy as the powder. And once you get the formula and the liquid in here, all you have to do is shake this a few times and it mixes. It's a lot easier than trying to stir it up in a cup. The best way to heat up your bottle of formula afterwards is a cup with hot water in it. Do not stick the bottle itself in the microwave. You're going to leach things out of the plastic that is just not good for your kitten. So usually 30 to 60 seconds in the microwave is enough to heat up one full bottle of formula. Pretty. So in your little can of powdered formula, you do have a scoop that is provided that you will be using to measure out uh, the formula and water for mixing. The average mixture for formula is one scoop of powder to two scoops of water. However, with brand new bottle babies, especially the little ones, they frequently are a little bit dehydrated when they first come in, so I prefer to actually do a bit of a dilution on this. So I will do one scoop of powder to two and a half to three scoops of water just for the first day or so to help them get their water uh, levels back up. So the reason, as I stated earlier, for wanting something like a sports drink bottle is it is just so much easier to get this formula into the container. So you get a little bit of spillage, but there's one scoop. And so two scoops of formula and the four to five scoops of water tends to be sufficient to fully fill one of these bottles up to the 60 ml mark. So after you put your formula in, you would take water. Uh, normal tap water is fine. I have it in a cup here just so that we can uh, have our supplies together easier, but you can do it straight from your faucet as well. So one, two, three, four, and five, because our little uh, kitten that we're going to be feeding is very young and probably a little dehydrated. So you put your supplies back, put your lid on, and the other reason why this is awesome, my formula is now mixed. So, as proof, here's the formula after just that little bit of shaking, no lumps. You're not going to get this if you're mixing it in a cup. Once you get your formula mixed, you can put it into your bottle, just with simply pouring it in. The formula, when mixed, is good for about 24 hours, so try not to overmix your volume, otherwise you're going to run out of formula faster. And as you can see, that pretty much filled it right to the top. All right, so when it comes time to feeding, heat up your cup of water, put your bottle in, and you wait. Usually takes about two or three minutes to heat up sufficiently. So after your bottle has been in the water for a couple minutes, you want to go ahead and take it out, mix it up a little bit, so give it a couple shakes to try to equalize the temperature, and then you want to test it on your wrist. So you do a couple drops, squeeze that onto your wrist, and the coldest you want it to be is feeling like there is absolutely no temperature. I cannot feel the milk that is on my arm right now. So you want it to be there to barely warm. If it is at all hot, even for a split second, when it lands on your wrist, it is too hot for your kitten. So once your bottle is heated up enough, you are going to retrieve your kitten out of its crate. So here is our little boy who is going to be helping us today. He is one of our over 500 kittens that is in foster right now. And he is two days old. Without our foster parents, 
we would not be able to save these super little tinies. So it is all thanks to you guys that he has a chance. So when feeding them, the position that you want them to be in is on their bellies like this. Do not hold them upright. Definitely don't put them on their back. This is the position they'd be in when they nurse off mom. And this is the way that you want them to be so that they are the least likely to inhale their formula. So you'll have him on a little blanket to help keep him warm. And I like to very gently hold the sides of their head just to help stabilize because they kind of tend to flail around a little bit. And you put the nipple right at the corner of the mouth and you kind of nudge it in because they don't have any teeth. These little guys, when they're two days old or younger like this and just brought in, frequently don't want to eat very much because it doesn't look or smell or taste or feel like mom. And so it tends to make them a little bit angry for the first 24 to 36 hours. So don't be surprised if they don't want to eat for the first bit. This is another reason why I like to dilute down the formula because as I said earlier, hydration is more important than nutrition. And so this way, any little bit they get is going to help keep their water levels up. Oh, you are a feisty one. He says, I don't want it. There you go. Something that can help them latch is actually tickling the corners of the mouth because then it stimulates the competition drive. You don't want to squeeze the bottle because you can force milk into the lungs that way. But so helping to hold the head just in place a little bit and tickling the corners of the mouth can sometimes be enough. Do you want to drink? You just have it on your tongue. He says, I don't want it. This is very typical of little tiny babies that have just come in. So if he was latching properly, what you would see is his ears would actually twitch back and forth in time with his drinking. He kind of wants it. He's thinking about it. There we go. All right. That's enough for now. So if they do end up inhaling some of their formula, or snorting it out their nose, what you would want to do is immediately pick up your kitten and tilt it head down and you're going to gently pat them to help get everything moving away from the lungs and back up and out. So he didn't inhale anything, but it's just a good method to be aware of. So the moment you see any milk come out the nose, if it does, you immediately turn them and begin patting. I think he's going to be a Siamese. You're good. All right. So another important part of feeding and taking care of these guys is pottying them. Kittens this age, up until they're about three weeks old, actually can't go to the bathroom on their own. Their mom has to do it. So you'll take some toilet paper or paper towel or gauze or a cotton, uh, cotton ball, and you will gently rub their genitals and their anus to help encourage them to pee and to poo. They should be peeing every single time that you go to feed them and they should be pooping at least once every two days. So just gentle little rubs and what you want is actually with these little guys is when they pee it should be clear. You don't want it to be dark yellow because that's a sign that they're dehydrated. So he actually was pottied uh, recently, so he doesn't have much to give us right now. But what I like to do is I potty them and feed them, and then I potty them and feed them again. So when you have a litter, you would go through and you would do a potty on one, feed it, potty the next, feed it. And you'd go through your whole number of kittens, wait a couple minutes, and then come back and repeat it. You'd find that they frequently have more to give you the second time around, and they will eat more as well. And so that way you can get a nice full tummy on your kittens and they can go well between the feeds. Will you eat? Because I don't want to. Come on, open up. Open up the little mouth. Open up your little mouth. 
So yeah, this is kind of what I like to refer to as the feral flail, where they just don't want to. He says, no, I'm not going to do it. Latch. I was thinking about it. Come on, Jesus. So, come on, just a smidge. He's hungry is the thing and most of what it boils down to is that he is a little cold and as I said the first 24 to 36 hours they frequently don't eat so I'm not too concerned with that I think that once he's warm enough oh there's a drop of pee so he's making a little bit of pee now so he is a bit dehydrated so he's not got much pee to give but we'll keep working on that we'll keep him warm we'll keep offering him diluted formula and we'll get some pee out of him. So as you can see, there's a little bit of urine there, a little bit of urine coming out right now, just a little drop. And so, there we go. That feels better, huh? And so if he was defecating, poop looks like poop. It's very frequently uh, soft or kind of sticky with these little guys. So don't be surprised if you see that. Are you done? I think you're about done. There we go. So they'll pee just a little bit when they're this small. Of course, as they get bigger, they eat more, they pee more, they poop more. Very typical. And when you think that he's eaten as much as he's going to, we'll go ahead and put him back in his little warm environment having either reheated up uh, the warmy disc or the warmy bottle, or if you've got your heat pad, putting him in a little nest on top of that. And you can kind of cover them just a little bit to help keep the heat in. And they will uh, typically sleep uh, most of the time. They're not being fed. Little guys like this should ideally be fed every two hours. If you miss an hour or two, it is not the end of the world. These guys are both amazingly fragile and amazingly sturdy at the same time. So don't think that he's going to die just because you fed him every three hours instead of every two. I usually feed every two to three hours from one week up to two weeks old. From two weeks to three weeks, I feed every four. Every uh, From three weeks to four weeks, I feed every five to six hours. Usually by the time they're four weeks old, they've begun weaning. And I'll keep feeding them about four times a day and offering them canned food at the same time. So you'll note that what I have in here is a blanket. Don't use towels in the cage with them. Towels do not retain heat. And as I have emphasized many times, heat is the most important thing. For these guys. Towels are just not going to get warm enough on them. So, so here is my warmy bottle and it's nice and toasty and so what I do is I take my fluffiest blanket and I wrap a single layer of the blanket around the warmy bottle. So here it is, one layer just between the kitten and the warmy. And then you stick that in the cage with the blanket in such a way that you can snug kitten right up next to it so it forms a nice little pocket here and that little pocket is where you're going to put your little baby so that way they can be nice and warm next to their heat source and there we go and he'll fall asleep
So one thing that is important to keep in mind with these guys is that they are very fragile. He's two days old and there can be things wrong with them that are not apparent. So don't think it is your fault if something does happen to one of your kittens. It happens to all of us. I've been doing this for 11 years. I still lose kittens sometimes. It's sad, but the numbers that we save more than make up for it and it is a really, really rewarding opportunity and chance knowing that while yes, there is a small chance that he might still die, good to know that he's got a much better chance with you than without. Without our fosters, he would die for certain. And so you are giving him an amazing shot at life that he just would not have had otherwise.